not just, not just, not just decoration. We are transformation. Transformation. In the beginning was a garden. This is Garden Studios. Welcome home. Welcome to another episode of Garden Studios. <laughs> oh no! Hey, listen, guys. This is, this is gonna be bad. I'm your host, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't even I, laughing a minute ago. We were doing okay, so Okay, stop well. it, guys. Stop. Let's get together. I'm your host, Paul. This is my um my my girlfriend. <laughs> my girlfriend. And my wife, Mattel. And today, guys. Hey, listen. Get attention, guys. Um, today we have a, we always say we have a special guest, but today it's a real special guest. Um, I've known him since we were uh, 13 years old. Mm-hmm. Sorry for my chewing. He gave me. He this is sponsored by Sour, Sour Patch. Patch Kids. <laughs> Water Malone. Yes. Sour Patch, please sponsor us. But I know, I've known him since we were, um, yay high. Mm-hmm. I was shorter. I'm getting emotional. I'm getting emotional. And, um. <laughs> Uh, we were in, we met in eighth grade. Yep. And um, we became friends. Wait, can you want to tell them the story how we met? Um, I got it. Okay, go 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 for it. So, um, which camera am I looking at? No, no matter. No matter. That's no. the main one. I guess so. All right. So we uh, we met in eighth grade, um, Burnett Middle School, and I remember I was just. Um, this is a Christian podcast. It's very Christian. Bro. Okay, so I remember I was first on fire for God, mm. Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Like right. super stoked, super. playing music at youth group, just learning how to play guitar. Like mm. it was like youth group every day, right. homies all the time. Mm. And so I remember when I met Paul, and he looked very sad and depressed in class. He looked super sad, and I was like, this guy needs Jesus. And so I started talking to him about this really cool band called Hillsong United. And I was like, they, they're they like rock, but they have a great message. And then he was like, oh, I know Hillsong. And I was like, no way. And then we basically found out that we were both Christian. Oh, okay, can I just... You want to see your uh, side? Can I just say my side? Yeah. So, um, okay, first of all, let, let me finish this introduction. And I'll say the true side. Okay. Is that okay? Um, he's a musician. <laughs> And uh, he's he's a good musician. He now uh, plays music with the likes of uh, Gloria. Gloria Gaynor. G- Gaynor. 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 She does the How Will Survive. Right. How Will Survive. And also. Um, She's still the, a legend. The, the Gentile one. What's his name? Ja Rule. Ja Rule. Anis. Anis. Just started playing with him. Mm-hmm. Um, just a bunch of folks. And uh, right now we're in. This is uh, Garden Studios, New Jersey edition. We're at his oh. house right now. Welcome to my crib. Is that is that one of his songs? Oh, no. Welcome to my crib. There you go. That's Ja Rule. But with, <laughs> with no further ado, uh, Richie Nobrega Jr. Let's clap. Give him a, give him a hand. <laughs> so, bro. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You got to tell your story. So, okay. okay. So, my version of the story. So, it's eighth grade graphic arts class. Um, it's like middle of october so school's already been like a month and then this kid walks in uh long hair but like mad long i couldn't see his eyes and then he just had a smile like this like just grateful to be alive. <laughs> grateful to be alive I had, I, had, I had the joy of the lord man. right and um i was like hey because he's a new kid i was like, hey, sit next to me and then i was actually the christian one i was the one that's like mm. you know trying to evangelize to this philistine and um, you mean Gentile? and and then he he was he just started talking to me like like you know you know Hill song and I was like yeah I'm actually I'm actually a very much saved <laughs> very much and, um, at, eight, at, eight, <laughs> at the age of thirteen but yeah so we became friends and um, yeah oh that's... yeah and, we, and I found out you sang like amazing like Whoa. Paul was one of the greatest eighth graders singers I've like, ever met okay. <laughs> When I was in eighth grade, guys, I had a higher voice. I sound just like Mariah Carey. Yeah, he, like a young Mariah Carey. But he loved doing John Legend. John Legend, yeah. What was it? 
Ooh. Take it slower, yeah. slower. <laughs> Why are you singing like that? That's how <laughs> you sing way better than that. That's how I sing, bro. First, oh that's an attack. But so we just want to have Richie on because I've known him since we were kids, and now he's like on tour, and he's a, he's a celebrity now. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> he's a celebrity now. No, I'm not. And so um, <laughs> we just want to talk about his life as a. Ce- <laughs> this is why I didn't want to do this. <laughs> We just want to talk about his life as a celebrity. <laughs> no, but real talk, bro. Can, can we add? Okay, come on, get it together, Richard. That's my father's Dr. name. Um, <laughs> it's so, like uh, Finding Nemo. That's my father's so, name. When did you? I mean, I know this, but this is for our viewers. When did you okay. start playing um, uh, the guitar? Okay, so actually, my mom wanted to teach me guitar when I was little, really little, but I just wanted to play outside my friends. So I was like, this is whack. And then years later, um, when I was actually living at my aunt's house with kevin and andrew Uh they had a drum set they had guitar and i was like oh i want to learn drums and because my dad plays drums and then um i told my mom i was like hey mom can i play drums can you buy me a drum set and she was like no you gotta learn guitar first i was like what i think she had like a vendetta because like i didn't Uh learn before so i was like all right no problems i'll learn four chords and play like every pop song on the radio and then i'll get a drum set and then um I was practicing on Andrew's guitar, oh. and um, it, was, it was. I like started playing, and I couldn't stop. Wow! Like I just fell in love with it. Like my mom would catch me sleeping with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Andrew, Andrew Almeida. That's uh, Richie's cousin. My Good cousin. Friend of, yeah, love you, bro. Where is he? Where is Andrew? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so you started playing when you were uh, third. That was the, the summer I met you. you yeah, just started right playing, before right? I mm-hmm. I started learning it. Right before I mm-hmm. met you. Gotcha. You were already mad good. Oh, you playing, playing Shrek? I remember you playing Shrek. Shrek. You're playing like tunes from Shrek and stuff. What? Um. Oh, that is so whack. But um. Okay, so from there. Okay. And then I saw the face. Like I know you. You play. You play at church. Right. Yes. So does that did that how did that play a role in your playing? So, yeah, I mean, that's where I started playing. That's where I learned how to play. Mm-hmm. Um, we were in a Brazilian church, but we did a whole bunch of different styles. So I learned um, everything from, you know, the whole Brazilian thing, which is like, <sighs> old, yeah, like old school right. kind of sounds. But then we had some gospel sounds, and then obviously we were doing, you know, like we were talking about the Hillsong stuff. And then, um, yeah, I just learned so much just playing youth group, right? Different, different genres. So from there, um, you you slowly got um, what's it called? Voluntold. Volunt- you got Volunt- slowly voluntold to become the worship director. Oh well, that's uh, a whole yeah. That was was that is that too far of a? Of well, a at stretch? first I was just playing. Like when I first started playing, I was just mm-hmm. playing chords in the back. I remember I had a little amp in G, G. Uh, yeah. Uh, he literally just let me come on and play, and uh-huh. it wasn't. I don't even think it was in the house. It was just an amp pointing at me. <laughs> That's smart move. Yeah, it was smart. smart move. So I just started playing like that, um, and then after a while, I started doing lead guitar stuff, um, and then that was when Doug was leading. And then when he got old enough, he just then he volunteered me to lead the youth. And then ever since then, I've just been voluntold to, right. <laughs> from youth group to, to main uh, uh, worship leader in the English service and then being in charge of everything right. with the Spanish service, Portuguese service. And then and then you, and you came on. Yeah, I, I hopped on there for a little bit. Like a year and a half But that's so. like, that's, oh, that's a whole, that's a span of 10 years we just right, talked about. For sure. So you started off... Um, Playing, just picking up a guitar, yeah, and then slowly you, you ended up liking it, and then mm-hmm. start playing in youth group, um, and then progress to eventually becoming, it's really the worship pastor. Yeah. Yeah, and then you went you also went to school mm-hmm. for for music. Yeah, so I hadn't I hadn't um, that was the first time I was actually taking lessons like with 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 a person like uh-huh. not just watching videos. Um, was in college, which is in Naya College. And they were only doing classical at the time, so I was just learning classical. But it was great. Like I had the, actually that guitar right there. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot of technique there. But I would also, like, on top of learning all that music and like practicing, I would also like be in a practice room at the school for like 
legit like two to four hours a day like yeah. I went every day and I practiced my own whatever I wanted to do yeah. and I think it was in, in college that I really really started progressing because I was like in the shed just like right were, were you having fun like whenever you you'd, you'd be practicing because honestly one thing about you because a lot of a lot of just not just musicians but like people with their craft they get they get tired of practicing yeah. like it's a discipline but for, i feel like for you it's just like fun for you yeah i just never i never did the whole like okay i'm gonna like learn this today or i wanna like right. it or like okay i'm gonna do these exercises it was always like i just made sure i had fun with what i was doing and it was something that i would be able to pick up and then i would just do that and it would be so much fun and then it was it was from it was from that having fun mentality that i was able to get to you know bigger things right. because i didn't care about you know like right. i was i was like oh let me do that very cool simple thing and started building up you know muscle memory and you know that ability but it was always through fun like We're, like cuz that's i don't know if you know that's not that's like not common like a lot of musicians are like they're what drives them is like being disciplined yeah but like you come from if someone doesn't know you, they would think you're like super disciplined. With yeah, the music. I, I always get the, I always get, oh, yo, what scales do you do? Right. And I, like most of my life, I never really, I never really did that. Yeah. Like, I, or maybe I was doing it in a way that like was fun and made yeah. sense for me, but I wasn't doing, but right. like it's not like I stayed in my room do, doing that like 10,000 yeah. times. Dude, who's that crazy bassist? Oh, what's his name? Um, oh, what's his name? Um, Victor Wooten. Victor freaking Wooten. He's dude, the man. So, uh, do you know anything about, like his story and stuff? Um, I I I know him. He had a brother. He has a brother who uh -huh. played like this electric uh -huh. drum set that he made in the shape of a bass, and they used to be in a band together. Right. Um, but I don't know like his upbringing. So you you guys are similar as far as like how you guys were. Well, he's alleged. We're like brought up and like how so. For people who don't know Victor Wooten, um, he's a a lot of people consider him as one, if not the best bassist yeah. in, in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And um, he was I, I was listening to his I don't know if it was a TED talk or a conference that he was running, but he was raised. Um, so his brothers are all musicians, the older yeah. brothers. He's the youngest one. And so the only instrument they needed was a bass. <laughs> so growing once he was four years old, he was already touring. With his or four or five years old yeah, with his like, with his older brothers, it's like Jackson Five status, right? And and his parents never taught him. Like his parents, if, I think I, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. His wow. parents actually aren't musicians. They're really? musical, like they love music, but they're not musicians. It was his oldest brother that would teach him how to play the bass, and they ended up touring. And um, the way his brothers taught him, like they never did any scales. They ne never taught mm -hmm. like talked about music theory, but he would just like copy what they would do yeah they would like do hits like okay i want to play that that sounds fun and it was always the fun yeah. that drove him yeah and i mean i will say um growing up like i realized that i did have like an ear for things like i can kind of hear something and then like i remember when i was i don't know i think i was like nine i had a keyboard at my house and uh -huh. they had songs in it like star wars and i would like learn how to play star wars because i would hear it and then like you know visually follow, figure it yeah. out linearly like with the keys so, like, I know that I've always, like, you know, been given, like, a God-given, like, ear thing where I can right. hear something. Um, but, uh, but I mean, it, it, the, the f chasing the fun applies to everyone. Right. Like, what would you say to a person that's super disciplined, bro, and, like, but there's no fun? Like, how, how, is, that, is that, like, a state of mind that you can learn to get into? Because I feel like... It, I don't know if it kind of came natural for you like that fun thing like fun was always your drive yeah i mean the the heart of it was fun there's definitely times where i would hear a song and I'm, and I'm like oh that's a really cool guitar part and let's say it was like really hard right but i was like like i was also disciplined and determined to like figure it out but it was right. but it all had to do with like why did i want to play that line i was like because i think that song is so fun and yeah. so cool it wasn't yeah. like like oh here's this thing in this book or yeah. you know it was something that I was like oh man which is um, so I guess to someone who thinks that way a lot um, as a question would be like um, like why do you feel the need to get whatever you're trying to learn or or why do you 
why are you doing it that way or right. like what's what's like what's your goal right and then obviously they'll say the goal and then it's like, okay cool why do you want to achieve that goal right. and then you find out oh because i saw this guitar player do it and right. i see or like this is what i perceive to be the next step that i have to do right. to grow and then then you can figure out oh well maybe you're not having fun <laughs> yeah so it's like the motive huh yeah like the purpose mm-hmm. if you, you know your purpose yeah totally for sure yeah, because, like, for me, if it's not fun, like, I don't do it. Oh, for sure. But, like, it kind of works against me in that sometimes I get bored too easily. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I ended up going to, like, different mediums just to yeah. try to find that fun again. Um, but what do you call this? Sorry, there's, like, hair. I, like I have a dog, on. and his hair is just everywhere. He, like, he's so cute right now. I don't think we have a shot on him. Yeah, his name is Redding. He's He's actually dreaming right now. Look at him. Let me see if I can. Hey. Hey, you okay? How'd you come over here? Come on, Redding. Come on. He just woke up. Look at his eyes look crazy, bro. Come on. Come here. There you go. Come on. Come here, buddy. He's so cute. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Come on. Right here. Good boy. Right here. There's Redding. There you go. This is our actual guest for today. Nice stretch. (laughs) So, Redding, tell us. Um, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh-huh. I'm not doing word of the day today. Oh my gosh. You see that? I got so excited. All right. So, um, usually when we start off our podcast, we play a game called oh. uh, Word of the Day. Okay. okay. Um, but it's a game that it just kind of goes on for the rest of the podcast. Yeah. So, we just mentioned a word that no one ever uses. Whoever says it first within the podcast, it has to be natural wins a word that no one uses no one really uses yeah i have i have the word right in front of me now oh okay okay so but if you say and just kind of yell it out Mm -hmm. it doesn't count we're gonna veto you it has to be coming natural so today's word of the day is nincompoop 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 i didn't know this was a real word i've I've heard it yeah multiple times so it's just it's a noun and um it's a foolish or stupid person nincompoop Mm -hmm. yeah so bro so let's go back into your story right so, your your worship pastor. What happens after that in your uh, music musicalities in your musicalities journey? Um, yeah, I went to college, and that's where I felt like I was really started progressing. But um, my connections that I started meeting that led me to where I am now is kind of through college. But it was like outside. Like when I was in college, I was, had my own. It wasn't a dorm. I was re- renting out this room um, from this random guy in town, which is <laughs> a little sketchy, but. Um, you remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but, um, but I had the freedom kind of like go wherever, whenever. Um, so yeah, I just started playing out more. That's when I first started playing out and like, you know, the term professional, like getting money for what you're doing, yeah. I guess. But, um, it was like the first time and I was like, oh my gosh, this well, is what like, gigs would you do? Um, it could have been, I think I did like some coffee house stuff or like m- mainly it was it was in churches though like oh. like a in the gospel scene where like mm. you walk in and no one has practiced anything and you you have to know the song and you got to go right and so they try to acquire musicians who it's almost like um yeah like you know the classic songs that you know like there's a term called jazz standards in uh-huh. the jazz world where it's like everyone knows them. They're called standards. Like right. you can just Two, five, call nine. it, and everyone plays the song. Right. right? Um, so it's kind of like that, but with worship standards. Like yeah. So so, is this the one in Trenton? No, this was. It was uh, I'll never. It was the first time. Was in um, West Orange, I think. Oh. One of the oranges. Yeah. West or East Orange. And um, it was with AJ Ryan. You remember that guy? AJ, why does that sound so familiar? Yeah, I did a whole bunch of stuff with him. Recorded a few songs with him. Um, he's at Change right now, though. He's he's a worship leader there now. Huh. But yeah, yeah, that was the first time I was like, what? Like the musicians were like, like I don't know what I was doing there. Uh huh. Like that. Like I was like, holy crap. Yeah. So, so who was your connect to get there? And how? Like, cause like. We're trying to connect the dots to mm-hmm. R- Richie, 13 years old, to Richie touring like all around the country. Yeah, so I would have been, I think I was 21 or 
I don't know. I mean, I was always playing in bands and stuff. Right. Like, I had this math rock band, El Americano. Yes, El Americano. <laughs> Let's talk about that real quick. Because you guys were sick. Do you guys still play together sometimes? No, but we're still all friends. Oh. Like, I was just with Mike yesterday. We, yeah. we just got coffee. Um, so it was this math rock band. Math rock is basically um, kind of like indie rock. Like, not too heavy, but we got a little heavy sometimes. But indie rock stuff. Um, but then the math part of it is where you have different time signatures. So usually music you'll have, you can have like one, two, three, four, one, two, right? Or you have like a waltz where it's one, two, three, one, two, right. three, one. Um, or like six, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. But it's like pretty much three. Um, but then you have odd time signatures, which uh-huh. is like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, right. three, four, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, right. four. That did ba 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 ba. I thought it was because you got you guys were just like really love math. We love math. <laughs> you guys like after the show, you guys were like do equations math, and stuff. <laughs> math study buddies. Okay, guys, let's go to the math lawn. <laughs> no, but there were you. You guys were a beast. Um, um, I remember the first basement show in, in New Brunswick. Yeah, we did a thousand bike. of those. Yeah. It was a little shady because yeah. when I walked, it was my first time, right? It was both I was ours. very sheltered growing really? up. Yeah, it was our both first. Yeah. I think when I walked in, concert. like there was a table on the side and there was like kind of like a screen. Like they were trying to hide. But I took a peek and they were, um, they were like snorting. Some, some what? Was, no. no. I think they're just smoking weed or something. Yeah, there's no, no bro, way. There was lines. I'm pretty sure I they were no doing way. Pretty I don't sure remember that, lines. but. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. But it was like a little divider thing. Yeah, know, it, was, it, was, it was this thing. underground college music scene. Right. Where people would, uh, you'd have to get the address from someone you knew, um, and you'd go in these basements where students would live, like, they would, like, you know, like, like people would rent a house, like, right. a huge house, or whatever, and they had this basement, it'd be so dirty, and, like, everyone's packed tight like sardines, but right. usually it was around maybe 40 people, but sometimes we'd get, like, 100 yeah, especially like the kids in there, and it's just like it was tight in there, bro. Yeah, especially like New Brunswick, which is like a college town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because of Rutgers. And then we went to a hot dog place down there. Yeah, yeah, or we get a fat sandwich. Yeah, yeah, fat sandwich. Yeah. So from the Ella Marcano Richie, how who was you, how did you get your like your foot in yeah into like the touring world? So I, I well I went I went to the shed once. <clears throat> I started going to these sheds. So a shed is where. Um, a whole bunch of musicians will come in and uh-huh. they will shed. Shed is a musical term where you go in your shed and just practice until you get it right. Is it an actual shed? No. Uh, but the, it comes from, I'm sure the first guy was in a shed. But, right. But um, it just means you're, you're, you're going out and you're figuring things out on mm-hmm. your own. But we would call this as a group thing. So you get like eight guitars, ten drummers, ten basses, like a lot of people in one room and uh-huh. then you'll interchange like, okay, throw this guy oh. on, throw this guy on. Sometimes they'd have two to even three drum sets at the same time, and they'd be trading solos. Where's this at? Well, anywhere, bro. At someone's church, um, at a rehearsal space. That sounds like mad fun. Oh, it was so Wait, much fun. Do you fun. have to get, like, invited, or is yeah. just, like, for Yeah. I was never cool enough. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I got called to one, and I was like, dude, I shouldn't be here. Because it was, like, crazy. Um. That's where the ear thing comes into play a lot, because uh-huh. they're just doing it, and then you gotta, like, do something. Right. So, I'd be able to pick up what's going on, and then kind of, like, do something on the guitar that, you know, fit. Right. But, yeah, that was that was so much fun. And so I met this guy, Joe Sakilas, JQ Bass, you okay. know him? Um, and he hooked me up with AJ, he was AJ's music director, so oh. that's how it all started. So I, every time I see JQ, I'm like, yo... He started it all, bro. So he scouted you. He did. From the sheds. Low key. One of the sheds. Low key. Yeah. So who who was your, um, so who was the gig that he kind of hooked you up with? AJ. AJ Ryan. AJ Ryan. Gotcha. How long did you play with him after that? Um, for years. I mean, I still, whenever he has something, I'll still, like, I just played with him a few months ago, but it used to be more, more frequent, um, especially before COVID and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, we'd play. It wasn't a lot, maybe like once or twice a month. Uh-huh. And then other people, like from there, then like it's like a spider web of connections. This yeah. person says, Oh, yeah, this guy can do it. Oh, yeah, I just heard him. Boom. Then another person hits you up, and another person. And all of a sudden, you have like people, a network of people like yeah. communicating with you. 
Wow. Literally, that's literally everything. And it's so crazy because as, as like a faith-based person, it makes uh, a lot of sense because you're like, you know, God will provide or God will, you know, obviously you do your part. You, you, right. know, you do your best at the job and you do your thing. You talk to people, right? right? You be yourself, you know, try not to be like some weird. Right. But, um, but then at the end of the day, it's just like you're literally waiting until someone calls you. And so like... Mm. Um, I've always been super perplexed about people who have no faith base, like whatever it is, like nothing, and they're like freelancers, and it's like, how do you, how do you wait for the next month? Like how? Because mm. for me, I like at least I have like a, you know, God's got me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for people who freelance, it's like all of a sudden, not yeah. only is, not only is like your ability on you, yeah. but it's also like your family. How do you? How yeah? How do you even? That's why they're so mad. A lot, of, a lot of them are just pissed off. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I can't even I don't get no nothing. That would be so... Yeah. So, dude, okay, so let's talk about who you're been, you've been recently touring with. You've been recently touring with um, Ja Rule, Gloria uh, Gaynor, uh, Anis. So, what's it like being... Like, you, we were talking earlier, and um, of course, there's songs that like don't necessarily... Um, coincide with the things that you believe in what's it been like being a christian in um a very secular sphere yeah that i mean that was um it's a really hard thing um it's a really touchy topic too where a lot of people can be super divided on it mm-hmm. um i mean i started doing i guess you call it secular gigs like maybe four years ago um started doing things like that and it wasn't really really that big of an issue um like I, ju- I, I mean I just started playing with Ja like last year so mm-hmm. it's, yeah it's been like a year um but uh, but here's another th- funny thing there's this whole scene of gospel musicians that yeah. are playing for all of these artists like mm-hmm. every yeah hip hop rap um pop all of these guys they're when you hear like a show that sounds like you're like whoa this is crazy music right. crazy arrangements crazy lines like crazy drums like they're all church musicians like right. 90% and it's it's so crazy um it's just, it's just this thing so I remember uh, I was playing at this church in Newark I was helping these guys out um and uh it was like um it was a little bit of a rough situation like not a lot of not a lot of uh like um not materials, not a lot of tech stuff. Like, mm-hmm. like we had to kind of like DIY a few things, right. kind of try and make it happen. So I was like, yeah, I'll just help out. And, um, and so I started doing that and there's this keyboard player there. He was just mad chill, like super chill. Um, we just got along. It wasn't anything crazy. He was just like, oh, cool. Like right. we would jam a little bit after, but he was mad quiet. Um, one Sunday, he's like, hey, uh, can you play a, a gig with me with Ja Rule? in a few months I was like what I was like Ja Rule he's like yeah I was like yeah dude that's crazy so um turns out his uncle had done some production for him and oh. he him and Ja Rule had become really close during the beginning of COVID mm-hmm. um you know where everyone stopped and you know right. you had whoever you had with you so he convinced him I was like yo you should get a band you know freshen up your show right. you know? um so that's when I got the call and we did it and he loved it. Like Jaru was flipping out. He's like, This is my bed. He's crazy. <laughs> He's like, Yo, he legit just sounds like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was stoked. So, um and um so yeah, we were that and that's how we got and that, you know, we've been playing with him since then. But um I remember when I when I first did the first one, I thought it was going to be a one-time thing, but then they, he asked us to be the band, right? So, um, thankfully, all those guys are also um, Christian and stuff. And so, you know, we can hold each other accountable and everything. Because right. obviously, that's the thing. Like, in that situation, it's like there's no gray area. Right. It's either you're doing the right thing or you're not. Right. Like, automatically. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, I mean, even Ja Rule, like, I, I was so surprised how, like, relaxed of a guy he was and um he has he he holds a lot of value to his family like his wife Mm -hmm. comes to the shows 
or his kids. Mm-hmm. Like I remember one time he did a show in New York and his kids were there and he like was on the mic and was talking about his kids like awesome. in the middle of these yeah. songs, right? <laughs> and, and it's funny because his music, right? He's just he's just like banking off music he made in his like 20s, right? So these right. old school music before he even got married or whatever. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's like n- nostalgia and stuff that, right. that, uh, that really is like, oh yeah, I remember that song or right. I remember my life during that song. But, um, yeah, it was definitely a thing that I was, um, uh, wrestling with spiritually. And so I, mm-hmm. I sought out some counsel from, um, some, uh, mentors of mine, spiritual people that I respect a lot. And I was like, man, um, I don't want to do something that I shouldn't be doing. Um, and they, literally all of them have said, um, like, literally, like if number one, that I was bringing it up to them, they were like, that's Mm -hmm. huge. Right. Some people would, would be too afraid to even question that Mm -hmm. or something. Right. And, um, they were saying like, uh, like some of them even said like if if there's anyone that would be you know um who would have God close enough to be able to like be in that environment and be a light you know in right. like a dark area um and not um obviously I'm I can like mess up whatever but they're like who are, you know who could have the armor of God enough to like right. you know you got this so they were they all encouraged me it's yeah. kind of crazy so um so I just knew that I had to ha- I had to have strict boundaries and stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, if anything weird would happen or something, I'd like nothing weird has happened though, which is mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. Everyone's pretty chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, he'll be like one time we had a rehearsal and Joe was just rolling up a blunt and <laughs> <laughs> in the practice yeah, room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> literally, literally. And then and then he's like, oh, he's, he asks us, "Do you guys want uh-huh. some?" Uh, and the whole band was like, nah, we good. Uh-huh. And he was like, oh, you guys clean. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's cool. We, we've, we've had, um, we've had conversations with him about God and church and it's like, it's definitely cool. But, um, I felt, I feel really, um, I don't want to say comfortable, but I definitely feel called to be in those areas where it's like, yeah. it's not like a safe right. place mm-hmm. spiritually or let's say it's not like a it's not like a church or it's not like people are coming in already waiting for god it's like a place where you have to like you know essentially be that light right um um even in those basement shows i remember uh-huh. people be like yo how are you having so much fun because i would dance and yeah and go crazy right yeah. like when i would hear other bands and stuff and they're like yo what drug are you on yeah and i remember like, that and yeah. be like oh i'm not on anything and they're like what <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you told me who the exact person to ask you that. Really? I don't even remember. She went to our high school. No way. Yeah. I don't even remember who it was. I've told this story so many times now. Like, the person you would not think. It was a white Asian girl. That's so funny. By the way, your laptop is on on sleep. Is that cool? I think it's good. Yeah, cool. Um, You want me to check really quick? I think we're good. What do you call this? So, um, so tell us about... So, you now you... Your recent tour is with Anise. Yeah. You've had a, a bunch of fun with that, huh? Mm-hmm. So this guy, Anise, you guys probably... Yeah, heard check him out. On TikTok, you might have seen him. It's like straight from TikTok to tour, man. So he started putting these songs, like, um, on TikTok, like him in his car just singing the song. And um, people were just like... They, they love the rawness, right? Like the uh-huh. authenticity. And him, he's such a... Uh, super encouraging and positive guy he always talks about you know like self-love and um not shaming yourself and um just like very positive things and i was like dude this guy christian or something and i found out that he is he's actually orthodox christian we had a whole conversation about that earlier which is awesome but um i was like dude this is amazing and it really sparked something in me it's like man yeah like this is definitely where i want to be musically where i can not only play Right, like, like with Jarrell's music, I don't ascribe to a lot of things that are said, right? <laughs> um, but I'm I'm there just like you know doing the best that I can mm-hmm. and just being like a being a part and like an instrument, right? Mm-hmm. But when I'm playing with this guy, it's like oh my gosh, now I can literally put my soul into this. Right. Like I can put, um, I can put. It's not only just my playing, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like I believe in this message too. Right. So it's it's such a beautiful thing. Um, it's definitely sparked a lot in my in my thought process. Yeah. 
Well, before we move on to our, our next segment, so we just want some key points for like our viewers. So one of the things that stood out was um, just having fun when you're playing. Mm -hmm. Like if it's not fun, like what are we doing? Like yeah. isn't this what it's supposed to be about? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what what's art's about. It's like it's a lot of fun. That's why we started. Like let's keep the main thing the main thing. Like let's just have fun. And also, um, for some of y'all that might be going into the touring world, you know, like. Boundaries. I mean, you talk about boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's super significant. Have people that you trust that can speak into your life and that can keep you accountable. Yeah. And um, yeah. You got. Any, was there anything else I missed? Um. I, th I think I got all of it. Yeah, I think that summarizes pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna move into our viewer questions. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to do. Um, so viewer question this is from Jefferson Adkins 42 from Baton Rouge Louisiana <laughs> God in studios my name is my name is Jefferson I'm an aspiring spoken word poet and rapper being that my wife and I have three children doing shows on the weekend takes a lot of time for my family and my wife has not been very supportive about it I love my family but I also love my dream of becoming an artist how can I balance being a family man while pursuing my dreams Looks like Redding got some thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. I think he was trying to, you know, when someone goes like... <coughs> right. <coughs> I think he's saying, yeah, yeah he struggles with that. <laughs> oh, that's it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a touring dog. How about this? We'll, we'll take turns, and then, yeah. What you think? He should. Oh, man. Um, so, music and touring is definitely a, a job or a passion, whatever it is for you, that... Um, takes a lot of time from your life mm -hmm. um, and a lot of time from other people like that is just naturally what it is mm -hmm. um, it's something that you have to set boundaries like you can't just you can't just um, say it's gonna be all right like it'll it'll all work out like you right. definitely have to be very very intentional because um, you can start focusing on things so much mm -hmm. and you, you know you'll have a good intention mm -hmm. like oh you know I'm doing this beautiful thing mm -hmm. or um, if I do this you mm -hmm. know my family will be good when I get back or whatever it is right. um, but it's just one of those things that um, can really start to degrade relationships like mm -hmm. real easily because um, it, it takes you know it takes a lot it's not just like a 9 to 5 thing right. um, you can't really clock out of it it's always going on you hear music everywhere it's all over the place even the work right like a lot of concerts are at night right so yeah. I know a lot of guys who have day jobs and then they go to rehearsals or Jeez. they go to, they just play at night and then it's like, oh, when are you ever home? Um, and this applies to many other jobs, but the boundaries and the intentionality is huge. Um, I, with my wife, Misty, I always try to communicate as much as I can with her. Um, I do a really bad job at it, for sure. Um, <laughs> but... I always try to communicate with her. Um, we talk about, hey, how does this, how does this make us feel for the both of us individually? Or, oh, I'm away for this long. How does that feel? Like, you know, I was away for the tour was like two and a half weeks, and then I did a a, a summer camp uh, with this church I interned at. So it was basically three three and a half weeks away. Sheesh, bro. Um, I mean, I was able to come in a little bit um, in between. Right. Like, we played a show here in Jersey, so I stayed home, and then. I got back and stayed a day and then left again. But even that is not full. It doesn't it doesn't bring fulfillment. It's just like a little right. um it's like a little temporary right. thing, right? So um so it's like even like finding ways to talk on the phone or like designated times or stuff. Like I said, I I, I have not been doing a good job. Like it's like really hard. Yeah. Um but the intentionality is huge. Um Yeah, and I can't even imagine with kids and stuff. Right. Like that, it's only it would only be even harder to kind of try to maintain. It's something you're going to have to sacrifice, or you will sacrifice. And it's are you sacrificing the work or passion, or are you sacrificing your family? And there, realistically, there probably has to be a balance between the two. Mm. Um, and, you know, a family will definitely have, a family dynamic will have to kind of understand that. And if they don't, then maybe you have to stop because the main important thing is your family. Right. <laughs> like, if you're going to lose your family for your music, that's, like, not good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think my take is a little similar. <coughs> um, just knowing what's more important to you. It will be different if you have, like, a supportive wife, you know, who would, like, be willing to work it out. But I think, um, yeah, that's that's tough, to be honest. It's, it's tough. I'm like, I don't even really have an answer. I don't. I don't know what to say. All I all that I can think of is like what's important to you but like talking out with your wife, like mm-hmm. finding something that works for both of you where you're not just giving up on your dream. Like you can do music, maybe not I don't know if touring would be like okay for now, maybe there'll be an opportunity mm-hmm. later on, but just like mm-hmm. um yeah, trying to figure it out as together and yeah, there's gonna be sacrifices in in both aspects with family and but every situation is different so I can't really give like a an answer Mm -hmm. but that's just what I feel listen I have a solution Jefferson easy just take your three kids and start a band with them boom take them on the road take them on the freaking road that's right start the Jackson 5 thing again where did that go who knows Start it over. Yeah, now that Silk Sonic and them are here, mm-hmm. you can start that easy. That's no what problem. I'm saying. No problem. So, so here's my here's my take. Um, depending on how um, old your children are, yeah, they can have children of their own. Are you just oh, making what? it bigger? Bigger, well, bigger, bigger? No, no, because we need more people. Usually, a boy band. Oh, he's not a boy band. He's a rapper. Uh-huh. My bad. Okay, so here's my uh, here's my actual take. Um, I think boundaries is important, right? Uh, I think you, you need to have um, your non-negotiables. And to be honest, once you have kids, it's like your life isn't really your own anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so for sure, like they have to be number one. They have to be first. Um, but at the same time, you need to take care of yourself. Like you need to have an output. Um, if, if you're so giving to everyone around you, but you're not taking care of yourself, that's actually... Um, gonna affect how you love the other people around you too so you you do need an output and as long as you're taking care of yourself um like you know if you do show i don't know i don't know what you do jefferson if you do like spoken word in the weekends or something and you need that for yourself to feed your soul go and do it um i don't think you should feel guilty about that because you need to take care of yourself too you need to take care of your soul and um but yeah for sure family first and i think i don't know to be honest this is a hard question because i don't have three kids and um I don't do spoken word, um, but for sure, like, I was about to bust out a, a, yeah. a rep right now, but for sure, just, like, balancing, um, taking care of your soul yeah. between, and taking care of your children, making sure both is, 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 is both sides are doing well, and, um, yeah, let us know how, how yeah. I mean, even, even if you're not, even if you're not married or mm-hmm. you're dating right now and you are creative, mm-hmm. like, um, even the people that you, you know, you start to, to date or someone you want to marry, it's very important to start having those conversations. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, my, what I do as a creative, um, this is the nature of what I do. Right. You know, the same way as like, you're marrying someone who goes, uh, who's in the military, they're going to be gone for months at a time. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, army wives have such a hard time for sure. Right. Um, but it's just important to start that conversation. Um, because it's just the nature of, of, of the work. Um, you know, policemen, like, they're right. out all the time, all throughout the night. Yeah. And it's really hard. And it's not to say, like, if you can't do this, I'm not going to be with you. It's just it's just saying, hey, uh, I want to make sure that our family can be built up. Um, but we'll, we'll need to start having these conversations. So when these issues arise, when you do start missing me, like, or when I do start missing you, or... When all of a sudden I'm gone for like six months or something crazy, right. it's like we've already set up, um, we've set up maybe boundaries or set up uh, set ourselves up for success. Right. Yeah, like the structure. foundation, the structure, yeah. yeah. Practical, yeah. functional things that can, yeah. For sure. Well, listen, Jefferson Atkins, we're gonna pray for you. Um, good luck yeah. with your three kids. Yeah, Jefferson, I would just say, um, don't ignore your kids or your wife. Don't be a nick and poop. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That was pretty good, bro. Thanks. Can That's I be very honest? Last I, I forgot about I forgot about the word of the day. Sweet. I've Honestly, been thinking about it the whole yeah. time. Yeah. I I was thinking of putting even, it in when we were at the talking about the basement. I was like, yeah, there was a bunch of nincompoops. But it, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. It like slipped my mind. I was like, oh, I can't just that's like bring it good. back. Well, congratulations to Richie Nobrega Jr. for um the episode ten or eleven episode eleven winner of Word of the Day. Yeah. And with that being said, we're gonna move on to our last segment. And our last segment is five minute song. So for five minute song, we're gonna write a song with a five minute timer. It could just be a verse, a hook, and then like another hook oh, for a bridge. Wow. What's the topic gonna be about? That's the thing. You get to choose, babe. Because usually oh, you I pick choose. out of a hat I and can tell. you don't have a hat. So I will say what is the first thing that comes into my mind. Okay, ready? So our subject of the day for Five minute song is sand. Sand in my pants. Okay. I also live by the beach, so it's right. Yeah, over I think that's why it came into my head. Beautiful. Like... <laughs> here we go. So, song of the day is about, about sand. sand. Okay, let me put it. Give me some. Give me some soul, Richie. Um, so you gotta have to face towards this guitar, baby. That's all right. Actually, I'll put this one here. I'll pick it up next. Yeah, but put it by his face. He's gonna sing too. I'm not singing. Yeah, you were, bro. Uh, Alright, here we go. You sing while he plays the guitar. Okay, timer, timer. So our goal is to to finish the song within five minutes. Okay, wait. What's the style though? Huh? Could what's be the anything. Style? Could, could be anything. Um, what you feeling? Okay, ready? Set, starting. Timer starting now. Um. We got sand in my pants and it's starting to burn And if I don't get it out, ill. Let's do something like soulful, how about that? Sounds like, um, what's that song cater to? Okay, we got four minutes to 18. I know, I wanted to, I wanted to be about setting my pants. Chords for a for a hook. Um, what rhymes with what rhymes with sand? Hands. 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 Yeah, so it's like that. Nice upbeat. I'm just gonna work with it. <laughs> At the beach, I put sand in my pants. Then I had to get it out with my hands. And I don't know what to do. It's so cruel. Why did God make sand? It don't make sense, so we got sand, sand in my pants, got sand, sand in my pants, <laughs> sand, sand in my pants, we got sand, yeah, would that be, <laughs> that's not bad, that's pretty fun. Well, with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Let's give it a let's give He Shirt No Break another hand. Thank you, He Shirt, and uh, let's give Redding one too. He's knocked out right there. Love you guys, and we'll see you around. Not Toodles. Not
just, not just decoration. We are transformation. Transformation. In the beginning was a garden. This is Garden Studios. Welcome home.